Yo, what is going on YouTube? It's your man ZP. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, guys. And today I'm gonna be reacting to penguins. Um, this video right here is called uh, "YouTubers Actually Made a Good Movie." So, um, I've personally never watched any uh, YouTube movies. I think the only one I could I could really think of right now is Fred. Um, he was like a YouTuber way way back in the day, but he there was a point where he was like the most subscribed. But um, he had came out with the movie. And I remember seeing it on uh, Nickelodeon, and uh, I thought it was funny. It was goofy, you know. You know, I don't know if you guys know how his character is, but it's like goofy, you know, and just random. That was basically how the movie was, and um, I thought it was uh interesting to say the least. Um, but uh, that's the only like YouTuber movie I could think of. I think he even had his own show on Nickelodeon. I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure he had his own show or something. If I'm remembering it right, because I was a youngin at that time, so I don't know. That was a long time ago. But um, yeah, I'm about to watch this YouTube, uh, this video by um, Penguins here, and uh, see what what movie he's talking about. Maybe I'll go watch it after watching this video. I don't know. But uh, without further ado, and by the way, I hope you guys are doing good. I hope you guys are. Uh, you know, staying hydrated out here, drinking your water, and, you know, just chilling, just cooling, working, you know, staying out of trouble, and all that, and, uh, yeah, man, without further ado, let's get right into the video. YouTuber made movies, you no doubt think of extremely high quality productions that stand the test of time. Bro, you know, you know who, who he looks like? He looks like, uh, Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves? You look like Keanu Reeves. No, what's his name? It's Keanu something. Oh, yeah, it is Keanu Reeves. I'm tripping. Yeah, he looks like uh, Keanu Reeves, like younger brother or something. <laughs> like the long hair, the facial hair, everything. He, he really looks like him. Like Logan Paul's airplane mode or the classics like what the heck was that was was the airplane doing a dab bro what was Fine that bros f the prom and i absolutely need to mention the masterpiece fred trilogy fred one two and three oh i just mentioned that cinematic marvel that i just mentioned that bro i just mentioned that movie that's the only youtuber movie i watched even potentially rival the oh what the heck he has he has a Fred 2 and a Fred 3. I only watched the first one. Gamut. <laughs> that was his little word, gamut. I remember this. The Lord of the Rings trilogy. That's always a debate more heated than bone-in versus boneless wings. Which is better, the Fred trilogy or Lord of the Rings? Now I'm going to go ahead and drop the sarcasm for a moment. Everyone knows YouTuber movies are absolutely fucking horrendous. Downright criminal. Basically oh, a violation of the Geneva Convention being subject to a YouTuber movie. But what if I told you... That two YouTubers just did the unthinkable, the impossible. They defied our very understanding of what movie is this? We know it. They delivered. They made a really good movie. Would you even believe me? You're, you're probably thinking that uh, What's I'm YouTubers? a lunatic that's taking crazy pills right now, even suggesting that a YouTube group could make a good film. But it's the truth. Danny and Michael Filippo of the very popular channel Raka Raka just made Raka. a horror film called Talk to Me, and it's actually good. I'm sure a lot what? of What? They made that movie? I seen um commercials and ads for it, but I wasn't sure. I I didn't look into it as, as much. I didn't know they made a movie, bro. That's crazy right there. That is crazy. Talk to me. I actually I actually thought uh thought the ad for it was interesting. I'm thinking about going watch uh going to go watch that. Familiar with their work, they have a ton of huge videos. Absolutely, because I love bangers, horror like movies. The whole Ronald McDonald saga, and one thing that they've been known for is extremely over the top violence and like really good action sequences. Especially for being a YouTube channel, their action goes hard. And I'm happy to say oh, that's all crazy. that talent that they've demonstrated over the many years they've been on YouTube translated to the big screen beautifully. It was really cool to see what they were able to do with a bigger budget. So I really wanted to do just a pseudo moist meter here on the film. Most of you know I love horror movies. Not because I think Me it's too. a strong genre with a lot of really good movies in it. In fact, quite the opposite. I love horror movies because there's almost no Bro, what's y'all's favorite horror movie though? For me, it's, it's, it's between the Saw... Like, what's your favorite 
yeah, what's your favorite horror movie? For me, it's either Saw Three or Final Destination Three. Those are my th- those are my movies right there when it comes to horror flicks. But what uh um but comment down what you guys' favorite uh, horror movies are, man. We're getting close to October. It's getting close. Never a single good thing about them. It is just a bunch of fucking schlock that is pumped through the worst ideas ever. I love horror movies because most of the time they are fun bad. There is a never ending supply of trash being added to the horror dumpster and all of it makes me giggle and spit up like a little baby and clap my hands because it's so fun bad. I can count every good horror movie I've ever seen on one hand. My left hand, I can count every single high quality horror film I've ever watched. Until now. I am happy to say Talk To Me now enters that very exclusive list, meaning I need two hands now in order what? to say how many good horror movies oh, I've ever seen in my life. So let's get into okay. it. Now, the narrative revolves around this creepy ceramic hand and a group of kids who keep throwing parties using this hand as like a, a wacky event type deal. So what mm. you do is you light like a, a Ouija board? open the opening the door, as they call it, and then someone like grabs board? the hand, and while they're grabbing the hand, they say, talk to me. And then once they do that, they can come. Oh, hold on, bro. Hold on. This is getting kind of serious. Communicate with people from the other side, trapped in a limbo. Basically, they can communicate with dead people. And they go a step forward where they invite the dead people into their body to communicate with everybody else and give everyone a bit of a spook and a scare. Oh, no. Nah. But they only go for about 90 seconds oh, nah. and then they just take their hand, or well, they, someone else in the This is a little different from a Ouija board, then. Separates it from the ceramic one. And that breaks the connection. They blow out the candle, and the visitor is kicked out of the house. Fundamentally, what? that's how it works. So that's the whole concept. You grab the hand, oh, that's you a, invite that's them into a dope your body, concept. and they start working you like a fucking puppet. Like that guy out of the first Men in Black movie, the little alien in the guy's head pulling all the levers and says, Orion's belt. That's fundamentally what happens in this film with the spirits. Oh, so yeah, I'm watching that. Eventually, this I'm watching concept that. expands where... They keep throwing these parties because they really like communicating with the dead. It becomes intoxicating to them. They, they really love having their fucking bodies piloted like a Gundam. You know what's crazy is like people in real life, if, if this was like a real thing, there would be people doing this and they would really do it out of their own enjoyment. <laughs> this is like straight up facts, bro. People really, people would really do that, like some crazy stuff like that. I mean, you see people all the time going to graveyards with Ouija boards and all that crazy stuff, you know. And that leads to a lot of problems where now the spirit doesn't want to leave. And the spirit's pretty aggressive because one of the core things they establish that... You become you best friends with the spirit. Seconds, the spirit gets a little rowdy and doesn't really want to get kicked out anymore. And what they really want to do is kill the host because if they can kill the host, they get to keep them. So it then becomes a battle of Ooh. them versus the spirit realm. Nah, duh, and nah. It's really well done. Now, conceptually, you I don't pay think me it's no the type of money to play ever. this. I haven't exactly seen like the whole hand concept done or anything, but there's something very similar in a movie called Flatliners, where they get addicted to basically killing themselves and bringing themselves back to life. So they stay dead for like a really short period of time, so they can see into the afterlife for a little while, and then eventually that leads to the afterlife coming, you know, out from the after and just into the life now. And that's very similar to how this movie works as well with the spirits. So I think conceptually it's not like the wildest thing. They're not trying to reinvent the horror movie wheel. They're just doing it better than most horror movies that have come before them. Hereditary Mm. is an example of what I think is probably the best modern horror movie ever made. And Hereditary completely changed how I perceived horror movies. It went for a very unnerving tension building approach that never really lets off the creepiness until the very end i still think the last 10 minutes of hereditary is tragic with the direction that it goes but everything up until then i think is just unlike any other horror movie i've ever seen i don't feel that way about talk to me but everything i see here is the best version of normal horror movie approaches they take what most horror movies fail to do and succeed it also really helps Mm. that the acting in here is very good Horror oh, is not really can- that's a game changer too, right there. Having good acting in a horror movie, yeah. 
Because there's, there's a lot, man, there's so many horror movies that have terrible actors in them, bro. <laughs> and all you can do is just like, you're not really scared. It just becomes like a comedy at that point. <laughs> it just becomes like a, you just laugh, bro. Because it's, it's just, or you either laugh or you cringe. It's not really scary. It's just like, bro, what? <laughs> campy shitty phoned in acting basically where good acting goes to die but not this movie i was really surprised with how well everyone played their roles all of the characters were very well done especially the lead the main character here i thought did an extraordinary job she was also great at doing something that i feel most horror movie actors and actresses are bad at which is being creepy when you need to be so, like, when mm. the ghosts are inside of her body, she's able to be creepy without it being cringe. Bro, that reminds me of, uh, sorry that I keep pausing this video, but, man, things keep come, come, popping up in my head, and I, and I want to tell you guys, but, uh, man, the uh, that one movie, um, Get Out, all the actors on that movie, bro, like, they were so creepy to me, man, and it makes it it makes it to where you, you know the movie's fake, but, in, but you feel like they they act like that in real life like i don't know it was so it, it was just amazing acting in that movie i loved it where most of the time a lot of actors aren't able to do that it just falls flat and gets into goofy territory where you're watching the actor or actress try and be like unnerving but they just can't do it well she nails it she's able to be like sad and vulnerable and happy and outgoing and charismatic she's probably gonna be putting more movies now the switch to be like really like scary well whoever it is she's probably in a whole like, bunch of other movies absolutely crushed it really everybody in the film did so what i think is the most impressive thing about this film and what i really didn't expect especially given how violent and gory raka raka's work is on youtube is that they didn't just go for like gross out gore to shock you and scare you there is gore here, of course. Don't don't misunderstand me. But it's actually used in a really great like a context. Good plot, where it doesn't huh? feel like it's just yucky for the sake of being yucky. Like, oh, look at all those blood and guts. It always some purpose makes behind sense this. in this film <laughs> to the point where like it's actually used effectively as opposed to just like a cop out like gore, be frightened. It's it's really well done. Like it's not just guts everywhere all the time. It's used sporadically. When it's used, it's very well placed and very well framed with the narrative context that it's given. And I just thought they nailed that because their main approach to horror isn't just gore. And I'm happy to say it's not just jump scares. I think there's only like maybe one or two jump scares in here at all, which is a very, very normal thing for horror movies to fall into. Is just I ain't gonna lie, I really like the jump scares, jump scare man. Because people are gonna you know throw popcorn up in the. I, a, movie, a horror movie with too many jump scares, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna mess with it, man. I'm not. I'm not gonna mess with a horror movie with too many jump scares because they really get me. <laughs> and they get and they'll say like, "Damn, that was so scary because it made loud noises so many times," which is just a very lame thing. I, I actually don't mind horror movie jump scares. Full disclosure, because they're lame. Like I think they are a fun bad element of Dang. horror films. That so does that make me lame then? <laughs> I wonder if that makes me lame. <laughs> Is that what you're trying to say, Penguins? But I think if you're doing jump that? scares as your primary horror tool, you're pretty trash at making a scary movie. And I'm happy to say they don't. Talk to me does not rely on jump scares. It does what all horror movies should focus on: Camera. anxiety, Still. unnerving you, building tension, being creepy, but not overtly where it's trying hard to show you creepy things like blood and gore and whatever. Like, it, it, it's very good about subtly building up all of this tension, all of this anxiety, and letting things really linger. Like, I thought quite a few times in the beginning, this was leading to a jump scare in order to break the tension. But it never does. It just Ooh, keeps it going. Which is great. That's interesting. Now, I will say, they do, however, have a couple of, you know, ghostly spirits in here that are very clearly supposed to be, like, creepy looking. And I think those don't look amazing. I don't think they look bad. Don't get me wrong. But there's like a really silly scene involving one of them crawling around on the floor and then sucking some toes. And I was like, damn, I'm that something. was not scary. That was just really goofy. This fucking ghost bride toe Dude, demon camera. crawls around on the floor and then just starts sucking on one of the characters' tootsies. Like, I, I, hey, yo, I, what? It made me laugh, but I don't know if that was the intention of the scene because the context tootsies. of that scene is not like, ha ha moment. It's like, 
scream time. Like this is oh, shit's no. popping off. So <laughs> I would have been I feel gone. I don't know. <laughs> I would have been maybe gone. I'm misunderstanding, and it is supposed to be like a silly scene. But that's just one of those moments where I was like, I think this didn't land the way it was supposed to. It's very rare in this film, but there are a couple of instances like that. But I don't think that it is like overall detrimental to the overall product because I think for the most part, everything they do here, everything they set out to do rather, they nailed. They fucking hit a home run here. And they actually just did a pretty good job of just being disturbing. I, I was really invested in the film. So I think it's a, a banger. I'd give it probably like a comfortable 80, maybe even like an 85% on the moist meter. So yeah, uh, they, they did the impossible. This mm. was their directorial debut, and they're YouTubers, and they're doing a horror film. They That's so, so many cool to me. Working against them, and yet they overcame the odds and delivered. Oh yeah, banner. I'm so, watching that. I'm yeah, watching that. So, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, there you have it, man. I'm about to watch me some. Uh, what's it called? Talk to me. Yeah, I'm about to watch me some. Talk to me, bro. Um. But yeah, man, that's it for the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys didn't enjoy it, please make sure you like and subscribe. And I'm going to go ahead and see you guys next time. Peace out.